Wayward Magic, Chapter 4, The Bartender's Apprentice. It's been four days since our run-in with the two thugs. That first day, Tam and I were both on edge, expecting trouble around every bend. Maybe those two were members of some kind of criminal gang, or maybe they had some other friends that were going to hunt us down for revenge. Or maybe their bodies had been found and some kind of local posse was out looking for us, on the lookout for two women, one of them armed to the teeth with knives. But after those next two days, we realized the truth. Those two men were not part of any group. No one had found their bodies, so no one was looking for us. If they had been, we'd have been confronted by now. We did pass two merchant carts on the third day, heading in the opposite direction. No surprise there. We're nearing Stokely, a town roughly the size of all four of the little villages around Tam's family farm put together. Towns that size have businesses that sell things to the smaller villages and farms, and villages and farms sell things back to the town. Thus, a steady stream of merchant carts. But in both cases, the merchants took one look at us, decided we weren't looking for a sale or a trade, and moved quickly past. As we rode along, our horses keeping a steady pace, Tam asks, What are we to do when we get there? Are we looking for another girl like me? We're looking for someone whose name is also on the list I found, I respond. Not sure if she's a girl or not. They didn't list ages. She could be someone's grandma for all I know. All I know is that someone named Arabecca Hopwell living in or near the town of Stokely is on someone's watch list. We want to find them before someone else does. And what will we do if we find her? I shrug. We ask her to join us. And if she chooses not to, Tam asks. Then we move on to the next name on the list. So how are we supposed to find this person? Do we walk into town and just start asking? That seems a poor way to go about it. I chuckle softly. As much as I love quiet, I also love when the kid gets all inquisitive. It means she's relaxing around me, letting her personality out a little bit. Well, I say, it all depends on who you ask and how. Me, I like to start at a local pub or tavern, some place where people might have a drink or two in them already. Might be willing to talk to a stranger asking a few innocent questions, especially if you slide a few coins their way. Tam glances over my way. Is that how you found me? I nod. Yep, the little tavern in Two Forks. I mention the name Forthright, and someone says, Oh, you mean Alwyn's place? Little farm on the outskirt of Culver, wife and a little girl. Although the guy thought you were maybe ten. So I hung out by your farm a bit, watching. Once I was convinced you might be the one, I walked up and spoke to you and your father. The rest you know. So we just walk into town and go directly to the nearest tavern and start there? I smirk. Well, you can start there if you want, but it's getting late and I'm tired. So first I'm going to find an inn. I'm going to get us a room with two beds and a hot bath. At the words beds and bath, Tam's eyes get a wistful far off look. Oh, gods, yes, please. Then I'll get us some real food and we'll get some good sleep in some real beds. Then tomorrow we'll start searching. How does all that sound? Tam's smile is warm and genuine. That sounds glorious. So that's what we do. By the time we get to an inn, take a bath and eat a very nice dinner, we're both exhausted. The inn is nothing special, nor are the beds, but after a week of cold nights on the hard ground, a soft bed with real pillows and blankets is like sleeping on a cloud. The following day we feel miles better, and Tam looks more energized than she had since she left the farm. A little bit of rest was just what the poor girl needed. We were even able to have a local woman clean our clothes while we bathed, and hang them to dry while we slept. That way we're not putting our clean bodies into hard travel clothes. During our travels, by the way, I discovered that Tam does own more than one dress. Both of them, however, are the same shade of brown. We'll have to work on that. The girl can do with a pop of color. We leave our horses stabled at the inn. They need food and rest, too. And we leave our extra clothes and supplies along with my sword hidden away in our room. This is just an information run, not a skirmish, so we shouldn't need the sword. And I figure the less threatening we look, the better. I do keep a few knives tucked away, though just in case. There are two drinking establishments in town. One is a seedy little dive best known for being a front for a brothel, so I recommend to Tam that we start with the other one first. The Post and Pony is a small place, just five or six tables and one long bar with stools. It's not too dark, lit mostly by hanging chandeliers and one or two large windows letting in a little sunlight from the outside. 
Behind the bar is a young girl, maybe a few years older than Tam, with blonde hair that's cut short and spiky, an odd haircut for a girl in this area to be sure. Besides the blonde girl who's simultaneously sweeping the floor and ignoring us, the only other person in the place besides me and Tam is one older guy all by his lonesome at a table in the corner. There's an empty mug on his table and his head is lolling. It's still early enough in the day that I'm not sure if the guy is still here from last night or getting an early start on today. As we walk slowly toward the bar, Tam quietly says, There does not seem to be anyone of value in this bar. I should not think we should find much help here. Perhaps we should. Without looking up from her sweeping, the blonde kid behind the bar replies, You are aware I can hear you, right? Tam stops short. I apologize. I simply, and I am not ignoring you, the girl continues. I just... She brushes the dirt or dust or whatever into a corner behind the bar, sets her broom against a wall, and turns to us with a tired smile. I needed to finish that first. Now, what can I get you? Tam and I sit down on two of the tall stools set up along the bar. Tam looks the girl up and down. You are rather young to be tending bar in a tavern. And you look rather young to be drinking in a tavern, the blonde girl retorts. She turns to me. I can get you anything you like, assuming you have the coin. She nods over toward Tam, but we don't serve children. Tam is wide-eyed and indignant. I am not, uh, I put up a quick hand and cut her off. Tam doesn't seem to realize that the blonde girl is just messing with her. It's fine, I say. An ale, please, if you have it. Not because I really feel like drinking. It's just that I've learned that people in places like this are more amenable once they see that you're a paying customer. Tam sticks her chin out. One for me too, please. I raise an eyebrow. You want, uh, y you know that's alcohol, right? Of course I know that, Tam replies. I'm almost afraid to ask. Have you had alcohol before? Tam actually scoffs. Of course I've had alcohol. The way she says the word makes it obvious that she most definitely has not had alcohol before. But I figure one ale won't kill her. I hold up two fingers and the blonde girl nods. As she pulls a dark draft into a mostly clean glass, I say, you do seem kind of young to be tending bar. She shrugs. I'm just an apprentice. Typically, I clean and wash dishes. Lady that owns the place, Tierra Pana, she lets me tend bar when things get slow sometimes. She nods to the one single guy sitting in the corner. He's sleeping now, his head down on the table. His light snores gently vibrate the empty glass sitting inches from his head. It doesn't get much slower than this. I nod as she sets the drink down next to me and begins pouring Tams. Are you and your young friend passing through? The blonde girl asks. Or are you here on business? She shrugs. It's very obvious you're not from around here. Also, I'm fairly certain I'd remember a dangerous looking little woman in a pitch black cloak. Tam blinks. You think she's dangerous looking? I blink. Did you call me little? Okay, one ale for the lady in black, and one for the not-a-child. Before Tam can utter a protest, Blondie looks at me and says, And to answer your question, you are wearing pants, not a dress. Never mind the very odd cloak, and you hold yourself as if you can handle yourself in a fight. Not many women can. Most, in fact, I would say, cannot. And yes, you are shorter than me by a bit. Shorter than the 12-year-old, even. I am 14 years, Tam growls. She grabs her glass and lifts it to her mouth. She takes a hesitant sip, then pulls away, grimacing. Good gods, that is bitter. I chuckle and turn back to the bartender's apprentice. So, listen. Ugh! Tam groans. She's taken another sip, a bigger one this time, it seems. She even has a little bit of foam on her lip. This drink is vile. People drink this on purpose. She takes a long pull now. Ugh! This is followed by two more large gulps. I sigh. Slow down, kid. Go easy. I turn back to the blonde girl. So, we're actually in town looking for... We are... Tam lets out a small belch. Actually looking for someone. I turn in surprise to Tam, who's now holding an empty glass. I... Did you just... Did you drink that whole thing that fast? Of course, Tam says. Why? I close my eyes and exhale. This is going to be a long day. I should have warned you, alcohol has a way of muddling your thoughts. 
especially if you drink it too quickly, and especially if you're not used to it. Tam waves a hand. Muddle my, that is ridiculous. She slurs a little on the word ridiculous. I feel perfectly fine, and besides, as I have said, I drink... She waves a hand at the empty glass, obviously struggling for the word. Whatever this is, all the time. She sets the glass down on the bar with a slightly too heavy thump. In fact, I think I shall have another. Oh, God. I slide two copper coins over to the blonde girl. This is for the drinks. I add a third copper to the first two. This one is so that you do not serve her another drink. Tam lets out a little huff. I set a silver coin on the bar next to the coppers. And this one is for you, if you answer our question. Blonde girl raises an eyebrow. Must be some question. She gives a little shrug. But I probably won't be able to help you. There's not much I know that's worth one silver. She winks and grins. Unless you want to know a place in town where you can find some company. Your friend said you were looking for somebody, and I hear some ladies like that kind of thing. The brothel, I assume she means. I shake my head. We're looking for a specific somebody that goes by the name of Hopewell. The blonde girl smirks. His name is Hopewell. Is he a villain of some type? Odd name for a villain. Is it someone you're looking to arrest? No, no, Tam interjects. You do not understand. It is a girl, and we are not looking to harm her. We are looking to protect her. Her name is... She pauses, thinking, and I can only sit and watch as everything unravels. Arabella. No, Arabeca. That is it. Arabeca Hopewell. A pretty name, I think. Do you know her? We need to find her and protect her and bundle her up like a small puppy. I try really hard not to groan out loud. Blondie turns to me, pointing at Tam. Is the child all right? Does she need to lie down? No, Tam says a little too energetically. She is in trouble. She shakes her head. Not me. Arabeca, because, because someone is coming after her. Someone knows. Someone knows. She drops her voice to a whisper. They know she can touch magic. Blondie looks at me. Did she just say magic? Is that a joke? Tam stands up from her stool with a slight wobble. She can, and I can touch magic too. But shh, it is a secret. Okay, I say with a chuckle. That's it. Time to go. The ale has obviously gone to your head. I stand and take Tam by the arm. So sorry to have bothered you. Keep the silver for your troubles. But wait, Tam protests. We, we have to wait. Hold. She stops and pulls against me hard. She's staring straight at the blonde girl now. She knows. The blonde girl shakes her head. Listen, Tam, I'm sorry, but I don't know what... She pauses, frowns, confused. Wait, you never told me your name. No, I say quietly. She didn't, and neither did I. The blonde girl looks shocked. So then, how could I possibly know? Cressa, we all turn to see a woman peeking her head out from a side office. She looks to be somewhere between 40 and 50, with a touch of gray hair and wrinkles. Is everything okay, Cressa? The blonde girl offers her a smile. We're fine, Tierra. Just discussing some things is all. These two ladies are lost, and... She stops speaking as we all watch the older woman's eyes move from us to the front of the tavern, where eight men are walking in. They're all wearing identical outfits of blue cloth, leather, and chainmail. They're dressed an awful lot like the guards I killed a few weeks ago. Well, shit. Quietly, I whisper to Tam, Time to sober up, kid. Fast. The older lady, Tierra Pana, walks toward the guards with her warmest, most welcoming smile. Gentlemen, welcome to the Post and Pony. Can I offer you a... One guard steps up. He has long, stringy black hair, and I notice he has a small insignia pinned to his lapel. My mind flashes back to Marin, the douchebag in charge of the small group of guards back in the stronghold that I raided way back when. He had that same pin on his lapel. The long-haired guy draws his sword, and suddenly the entire tavern is on edge. Well, no, not the drunk guy at the table. He's still sleeping. Long hair points his sword at Tierra. Tierra Pana, you are under arrest. 
You are hereby a prisoner of the Emperor's Guard. Tierra takes a step back and makes an exaggerated gasp. Me? You're placing me under arrest. Whatever for? I've done nothing wrong. She gestures around the tavern. I'm a simple bar owner. I follow the law. I pay my taxes. Good hells. The establishment is even up to code. Two guards move forward, each one grabbing Tira by the wrist. Longhair still has his sword drawn on her. You are accused of insurrection against the Emperor, of supplying weapons to known terrorists, and of conspiracy and general rebellion. I assume you have some kind of evidence of these charges, the blonde girl, the one the older lady called Cressa, calls out. I was so focused on the guards surrounding Tierra that I only now noticed that Cressa has moved around from behind the bar. She's calmly wiping her hands with a bar towel. Tierra turns as best she can while being held. It's all right, Cressa. We'll sort this out. Longhair sniffs dismissively. We have testimony against you from a man named Fash Tamor. He swears to your guilt. The older woman just chuckles. Fash is a liar and a thief. He's also been trying to buy my tavern out from under me for years. This is simply his way of trying to take out the competition. Sir, one of the other guards taps long hair on the arm and points. Suddenly they're paying almost no attention to Tierra Pana because they're all looking right at me. I'm the one the guard is pointing at. Long hair gives me a smarmy grin. We have word to be on the lookout for a woman in black. Very dangerous, they say. Killed four of the Emperor's guard. I sigh. I only killed three of them, and they attacked me first. Cressa turns to me wide-eyed, but also with a hint of a smile. You killed three of them? By yourself? I sigh. Right, yep, that's me, the woman in black. So, um, yeah, you guys better arrest me. I step forward and put my hands out, awaiting shackles. I need to get these guys far away from Tam, Cressa, and the tavern. Heck, with any luck, maybe they'll even forget about Tierra. Arrest her, the long hair says, and the blonde girl, too. Take her in for questioning. In fact, arrest them all. Well, that didn't work. One of the guards begins walking toward me with some kind of metal shackle in his hands. Then he stops walking. He stops in mid-step, one foot still in the air. His eyes widen in fear. He is frozen straining against something unseen. Tam, I say quietly, no, don't. But Tam is now standing right by my side. She's not doing anything, but she's looking right at the guard with the shackles. Her voice is quiet, but hard and sharp as steel. You will not touch her. None of you will touch her. Now none of the guards are looking at me or Tiara. They're all staring at Tam. Longhair turns his sword and points it right at Tam. Witch! She is touching magic! She must be! Arrest her! Arrest them all! That's followed by the sound of swords unsheathing, as the four guards who were still hanging back now draw their weapons. Longhair turns back toward Tira, scowling. I don't know what kind of establishment you're running here, but if you think... His words are cut short as fire, an actual goddamn ball of fire flies right past his face, scorching a large chunk of his hair and fading with a whoomph and a scorch mark against the far wall. That makes every guard that was stepping forward think twice and pause where they stand. Even I turn and stare at that one. And sure enough, there stands Cressa, one hand cupped in front of her with smoke still curling from her fingers. I wasn't lying when I told Tam that I'd seen other magic users. Most of them had powers similar to Tam's able to move things or break things with their mind, but I'd never seen any of them throw a fist-sized ball of fire before. Long hair, his hair now only long on one side, gives a frenzied look and screams, Kill the witches! That's when Tierra growls, The hell's with this! She moves fast, twisting her left wrist hard, breaking the distracted guard's grip. At the same instant, she flashes one leg up and out, her wide dress flaring as she drives a foot into the stomach of the other guard. That guard loses his grip on her as he grunts in pain. Her hands flash in a series of open palm strikes to both guards' noses and faces. She takes out one guard with a kick to the knee that ends in a crack. She makes a fist and punches the other guard hard in the throat. This woman, who's 20 or 30 years older than me, has effectively taken two guards out of the fight in a matter of seconds. I have no idea who this woman is, but she obviously isn't a simple bar owner. 
Long hair flares in anger and raises his sword an instant away from striking down Tierra. There's a quiet swish, and he glances at his sword hand, which is now impaled by a throwing knife. It takes a half second for his brain to register what he's seeing. A half second after that, the pain kicks in, and the severed nerves going to his hand cause his fingers to go numb, and he drops the sword. And a half second after that, just as he's about to scream, Tierra, God bless her, spins and kicks the distracted long hair in the jaw, and he drops. She is most definitely not a simple bar owner. All of this distracts Tam enough that she loses focus on the guard holding the manacles. He unfreezes, realizing he can move again, and pauses, considering. Does he move toward Tierra, who has now somehow taken down three of the Emperor's guard, including his long-haired boss? Does he try to take down Cressa, the girl who just shot an actual fireball at the leader of this little group? Does he go after me, the woman in black who suspected of killing numerous Emperor's guards in previous encounters? Or maybe he should just continue toward Tam, a girl who can freeze people in place with her mind. Hell of a choice, really. He drops the manacles, draws his sword, and goes after Tam. Before I'm able to help Tam, I see two of the other guards moving toward Tierra. Swords raised. A little help, she calls out. She picks up Longhair's sword from the ground and kicks another guard's weapon across the tile towards me. In one smooth motion, I snatch up the sword and engage one guard while Tierra crosses blades with the other one. In the chaos that follows, I see that Tierra's skill with the sword matches her ability to use her hands and feet. But I can also tell that she's intentionally using non-lethal blows, working hard not to kill the guard coming at her unless she has to. I decide to follow her lead. When the guard attacking me strikes, I block him, flip the sword around in my hand, and slice across, skipping the edge harmlessly across the leather armor covering his chest, but leaving a deep gash across his unarmored arm. He hisses in pain and swings again. I dodge and block, my blade skipping across his, and with a quick twist, I feel the tip of the sword nick his wrist, biceps, and shoulder. Now, distracted by pain, he swings wildly and carelessly. I catch his wrist in my left hand, stopping him mid-swing, and flip the sword again in my palm, this time bringing the sword's pommel down hard on the top of the guard's head. His eyes roll up, and he crumples to the ground. I shoot a glance over to the girls in time to see Tam reaching blindly behind her for something to use to fend off the approaching guard. Cress's broom suddenly jumps three feet over to Tam's outstretched hand. It doesn't make much of a weapon, however, doing little except making the guard chuckle and step forward even quicker. That's before the head of Tam's broom bursts into flame and suddenly she's holding a makeshift torch. The approaching guard stops and takes a step back, suddenly wary. The way that Tam jumped slightly, her eyes widening in shock, is enough to tell me that it was Cressa, not Tam, that ignited the broom. And while it's nice to see the two girls working as a team, I decide that we need to end this quickly before one of the girls accidentally lights the tavern on fire. There's a lot of rather flammable stuff in here after all, ourselves included. I needn't have worried, though. I turn back to Tierra for a second and she's already standing over yet another unconscious guard. Then I hear a low crash and a thud, and turn back to see the guard that was coming at Tam now lying face down on the tile, surrounded by broken pieces of wood. Before I can even ask what happened, Cressa grins and says, I distracted him with another fireball, and Tam made a chair fly up and smash him in the head. Didn't you, Tam? It was amazing! Unlike Cressa, Tam is looking away, obviously not happy with what she's done. Her broom torch has burned itself out, now just smoking straw and wood. And just like that, the fight is over. There are unconscious guards scattered everywhere, but I know they won't stay that way for long. We need to tie these guys up, I say. Or maybe... Tam simply takes two steps forward and closes her eyes. She raises one hand up and softly whispers, Remain asleep. Do not wake. The one guard who was just starting to stir suddenly goes limp, eyes closed. There's a quiet thunk as the drunk guy at the table in the corner slides out of his chair and lands passed out on the floor. If Cressa shooting fire across the floor was impressive, Tam knocking out an entire room of people with just a thought is absolutely astonishing. Tierra, Cressa, and I turn and stare at Tam in surprise. Tam simply gives us a level look. They will sleep for several hours now. How did you do that? Cressa whispers. And why didn't you do it sooner? Tam frowns. They must already be asleep or unconscious for it to work. It is why you are still on your feet. I consider this. 
So you've tried it before then? Tam blushes slightly, still frowning. The day I threw Rock Etruscan off me in the hayloft was not the first time I accidentally touched magic. It was simply the last. She shook her head. Until today. Well then, Tierra says quietly, we need to act quickly. 